Welcome to Black News Tonight. In the United States, women earn about 20% less than men. That number goes up to 35% for black women compared to white men. But there is one state that has the worst report card of all when it comes to black women's pay gaps. In the state of Mississippi, black women earn 56 cents for each dollar that white men make for the same type of work. There are currently two bills on the legislative floor proposing to help fix that. But according to the Mississippi Today, the Mississippi Black Women's Roundtable says the state's equal pay proposals have, quote, glaring flaws. They call these two bills the opposite of an equal pay bill, as they leave black women out and propose such low penalties that it actually pays for employers to violate the law. Last week, the Equal Pay Advocacy Group placed purses on Mississippi lawmakers' desks. Each one had a cookie with a 56 cents writing on it, highlighting the almost one to two pay gap. Joining me now to discuss all of this is Cassandra Welchin. She is the executive director and co-convener of Mississippi Black Women's Roundtable. Ms. Welchlin, welcome to the show. Why do you call these two bills, namely uh, House Bill 770 and Senate Bill 2451, the opposite of an equal pay bill? And, and why do you call for amending them? Um, Mark, thank you for having me um, on your show this evening. Um, this is this uh, conversation comes at a really important time. Um, as you said, we have two bills that's moving through the legislature right now. And both of them definitely are harmful to women in the state of Mississippi, and particularly black women um, in the state of Mississippi. It rubber stamps, uh, particularly when we talk about um, HB 770, um, it rubber stamps an employer's decision to pay women less uh, for equal work, and it leaves black women out, um, particularly with the House bill. It, it expressly allows employers to pay a woman less than a man doing the same job um, because of her salary history. Um, another thing it does um, is that it forces Mississippians to have to choose which law to use um, um, to waive either under the federal the federal law or the state law, and they have to choose um, which one. And so it really is conflicting. Um, we already know that women are, as you said, black women are making 56 cents on the dollar. Um, we have one of the widest wage gaps in the country, and also we're the only state without an equal pay law on the books. Uh, when we talk about the other bill, which is... Um, Senate Bill 2451, that bill is really harmful, too, and it's more symbolic than it does anything. Um, and Mississippi doesn't need a symbolic law. Um, with the Senate bill, it would block victims from pay discrimination. Um, of, it, it would block victims of pay discrimination from having their case fully heard. So particularly with this bill, what it does is it puts the burden on the victim to have to prove that she has been discriminated against. So she will have to plead with what they call particularities. Um, Mississippi is a notice pleading state. And so what this does, it tells the woman that she would have to plead, have to prove. The problem with that is that women already don't know that they are making less um, and making not what their male counterpart right. is making. And so it, it continues to perpetuate um, what we already know is occurring um, in the, on, on, on their jobs anyways. Um, and so it's really problematic. I, I, with both of these bills, neither one of them include race. Um, it only includes gender. It also does not ban employers from relying on salary history, which perpetuates the wage gap. Um, the other thing that both of these bills, it doesn't do, it doesn't protect the employee from retaliation. One of the things that we know from our research is that when a, sometimes employers ban their employees from discussing their pay. And so if she begins to discuss her pay, she can be retaliated against. Well, that's problematic. Um, and particularly when we talk about women who, particularly in Mississippi, are half the workforce, but we make um, two-thirds of the minimum wages in the state, and we have these kinds of practices inside of our businesses, um, we are, we're already, our pocketbooks are already less. And so we continue to put additional burdens on these women when all the only thing they want to do is take care of their households. Uh, we know that 
right. women in the let, state let of Mississippi. Let, 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 sure. let, let, let me just ask you a question. Because the bills are clearly inadequate, right, based on your argument. Clearly. Um, why did they get support in the legislature in the first place? Was this an attempt by people who really aren't um, interested in women's uh, pay gap getting smaller? It, was this an attempt to kind of put window dressing but not really do anything? I mean, because it's interesting because the House Bill 770 is actually authored by a black woman state rep, uh, rep Representative uh, Angela uh, Cockerham. So I, I'm, part of what I'm trying to figure out is why, why does a weak bill make it up at front, make it up at all? You know, this is a, a really good question, and I can't, I'm just as baffled as you, and I don't understand why um, a black woman um, in, in her unique position would introduce a bill that would widen, widen the wage gap um, and increase barriers. We did have, and we've been advocating for um, an equal pay law, you know, for at least six to seven years now and a good equal pay bill, and there is one in both houses that we have been supporting, but that did not get um, the traction that we wanted. And we was really surprised that she brought out this bill um, without even having conversations with some of the champions that have been carrying this for a very long time. And so we don't know. We're just as baffled um, as you are. What we do know, too, is that um, the colleagues who voted for the bill did not have an opportunity to really look at the bill because on the day that it got presented on the floor, um, the bill, um, there was a strike all that was done. And so they didn't have an opportunity to even look at the bill to question it because it just happened that quickly. And so um, we are just as baffled um, at it, but we are advocating and doing all that we can to tell Mississippians, to tell our lawmakers that these are not equal pay bills. There's nothing equal in these bills. And, um, and so we're just doing our so, part to just educate. But you're doing something else too, right? You're, you're critiquing these bills, but your group is also advocating for a different bill. Uh, the Senate Bill 2452, also authored by another black uh, woman. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, That's right. State Senator uh, Angela Turner. I was trying. My, my 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 brain froze for a minute. Angela Turner Ford. Uh, how is that bill better than the current ones that are on the floor? It's more expansive. It adds more protections. Um, as as I said earlier, there's a couple of things that we know um, makes a good equal pay bill, and one of the things and, and several things in her bill does just that. Um, it does particularly. Um, it includes race. Um, it prohibits salary history. Um, it also protects against retaliation. It promotes transparency. Um, so those are some of the things in her bill that will make a really good equal pay bill. Um, and it's a really good bill. Um, and we have been rallying support to get that bill um, before um, in the committee, voted out of committee so it can go to the floor. Unfortunately, those bill, that bill has already died on the calendar, but we know that a bill has to come on the floor. Um, we know that the Senate bill 2451 is going to come on the floor, and we hope, and our legislators, and we know that Senator Turner Ford um, said that she will work to try to get some amendments in that bill, um, some of those key, um, some of those key um, points that I just lifted up. We got to have it. Um, yeah. If this, this bill goes into law, it would be one of the worst ones in the country, and it will do women harm, um, significant harm. Because, Mark, what and, I want to say is that— what people need to that, understand is that—oh, please, I, I, I only have about 20 seconds, but I'll give you the last word, please. No, I was just going to say that if we pass a good equal pay bill, it puts $4.15 billion back into the economy. It cuts the poverty rate in half, the child poverty rate by a third. So we need a good equal pay bill, and people need to understand that these two bills are not a good equal pay bill, and it will harm Mississippians significantly, particularly Mississippi women. Absolutely. Cassandra, Cassandra thank you so much for your informative analysis. Uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, thank you for joining us on Black News tonight.